Today, we're going to be talking about one of the best kept secrets in the SAP Success Factors ecosystem and why you should be using it if you are migrating data from SAP HR to Employee Central. So, without further ado, let's get going. Okay, I'm going to apologize up front if I get a little fired up on this topic, but it's one that I think is really important because it is um, something that can really help you as, as you are going through the process of, of taking data from an SAP HR system to Employee Central. Um, uh, so what we're going to be talking about today is SAP Info Porter. So uh, right off the bat, let me explain what Info Porter is. So it's a SAP developed uh, migration process specifically designed uh, to send employee data uh, to uh, Success Factors Employee Central. So SAP has spent a lot of time developing this tool over the years. Um, it is an outbound version of the same tool set, uh, which is the Business Integration Builder or BIB, that is used to send the, the data back uh, to SAP HR in the case where you're doing a core hybrid implementation. Now, if you're using Employee Central Payroll, it doesn't use the exact same configuration, but um, uh, Right off the bat, you can see that if you're using, if you're doing a core hybrid implementation, yeah, you can see the value right away in using the same tool set. So, well, why should we use uh, Info Porter? So, for the, for starters, the the first thing I would say is, what does SAP tell you that you should do? Well, um, right here, you're going to see this is from the implementation design principle document on on uh, data migration, and it says it is strongly recommended to use the standard SAP Info Porter tool. So, um, if you're going through an implementation, and uh, let's say your partner is not necessarily uh, keen on using this, uh, you know, you might want to say, hey, this is what SAP is. Uh, it, it, really kind of uh, recommends that we use. So you might want to question uh, that way. Um, so anyway, so why, if that's the case, um, uh, you know, or, or since that's a recommendation, why is SAP making this recommendation? So number one, and the thing that you probably uh, will get uh, the most excited about is Info Porter as a way to get data from SAP HR to Employee Central is exponentially faster. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'll walk you through why that is. First of all, it uses um, OData or web services. So it's just doing some automatic calls into Employee Central from SAP. And from that, it can load each employee in seconds. So you can see here in this example, um, all of the data that's coming across, all of these little ERP WS17, um, that is, uh, that's national ID. The WS2 is biographical and so on and so forth. So each one of those things is going across. And so I, uh, I literally can just about snap my fingers and get an employee moved from SAP HR to Employee Central. Contrast that with if I'm doing files, um, I have to uh, export all that data and then I have to load the files one at a time. Oh, did that one go through? Okay, yes, it did. And then move on to the next one and the next one. Uh, so this is just exponentially faster. Um, just by, by virtue of the fact that it's using web services. Um, in, in addition to that, um, the there is a job scheduler. So if it's not just fast enough, that, uh, it's not, not enough to just say, well, we're going to be able to send uh, employees up one at a time and it take a few seconds each. That's not it. That's not the end of it. Uh, SAP also provides you the ability to run this in parallel, so that you're slicing your employee population up into small chunks and and loading those uh, little individual units, so you can have uh, like ten jobs running at once, um, uh, which really really speeds the process up. And so, what do I mean by speeding it up? So here's. Uh, Here's something from the guide, and this is very similar uh, to the experience that I've had personally from using Info Porter. So you can see here the total load times um, from the uh, from SAP from the from another implementation design principle document. Uh, you can see here that the, the number of perners, uh, which of course is employees, um, and basically you can do uh, twenty thousand employees in two hours. Uh, you can do fifty uh, to a hundred thousand employees in four hours. So. Think about that. You can get your entire employee population loaded. Let's say you have 75,000 employees. You can have that entire population loaded in four hours, um, which really is a game changer um, as far as like uh, cutting down that time that's involved in getting your uh, getting your go live finished on time. But there's more impacts to that that we'll talk about in a second that go just beyond the go live, what's happening at go live. So anyway, so that is number one. It's, it's exponentially faster. 
Uh, number two is something that I touched on earlier, and that is if you're doing core hybrid, um, which is of course leaving your SAP HR on premise, but you're going to have employee central in the cloud, then you're basically able to use the exact same configuration um, going out uh, to employee central as you do coming back in. Now, technically, it's not the exact same because you will, you know, there's there are going to be two different templates. You're going to have one that's going out and then another that's coming back in. And there's some slight variations depending on, uh, you know, if you're coming back. So it, it's not the exact same. But I will tell you that uh, as a practitioner, it's super easy for me to start the process from the migration template and then just make a copy of it and then use that exact same uh, uh, template when I'm bringing the data back in. So that's a huge win for us. Um, so next thing is um, why would I why would I um, uh, why it's better number number three is as I mentioned earlier you don't have to do you don't have to uh, go through the process of writing extracts from your SAP system um, if you're writing ex if you're writing custom extracts um, uh, for this process you're you're basically wasting time because SAP has already done all of this work for you. Um, they have they have built out a process that will go through and will do all the mappings for you. Um, you can also use um, you know baddies as needed. You know if you if there's some complexity uh, to the way that you need to have that data expressed when you get to Employee Central, no problem. You can still use baddies. You you still have the flexibility to do that, but um, you're able to use a simple mapping process in order to get the data uh, extracted and sent to uh, Employee Central. Um, number four. Um, why would you use InfoPorter? Another little cool feature that it has is the ability to load generic pre-cutover records. And so what do I mean by this? Well, with the with the latest version of centralized services within SAP, you really have you can't just load everybody in as of go live date uh, and have everything work right. Um, and that's because uh, the hire date that you want recorded on employment details uh, has to come from your job information, which means your job information, has to have a record that's prior to the full transmission start date, your, to, prior to your go live date, so that it can have the exact date that you need. So that's why um, InfoPorter provides this ability to say, okay, if you need data before the, the go live date, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a simple process to where you can uh, have kind of generic records prior to that go live date so that I'm not having to keep track of and, and maintain all the jobs that existed at the time that someone um, is, is, uh, was actually uh, originally with the company. Um, so instead, what I can do is I can just say, I just need all the jobs as of go live date, but for that time period from before, um, it's gonna allow us to, to uh, load the data, but load it very generically, which is a very, you know, very cool thing. Uh, number five, and this is another one that's really not completely understood, and that is um, InfoPorter can could go uh, even a step further. If you want to not only just load the go live record, you can actually load transaction history. And the way that it can do this is it has the capability um, to load in data as of a specific point in time forward. So it can basically say, here's my go live date, and then I want to record, I want you to show all of the transactions that happened from that go live date forward. So you could say, if you set that in um, uh, as of two years ago, then you can actually see the the employee history from two years ago up through today. Now, I don't want to say that that it's you just snap your fingers and that's all done. There's you know there's extra complexity when you start loading in history because you're loading in a whole bunch of inserted records and there could be challenges with that. Um, but this capability is not something even that SAP just developed so that people could have a neat way to keep their history and move their history up. But also, uh, there are a lot of customers that are doing something called side by side where they want their data to be um, uh, originate out of SAP HR and then still be available in Employee Central. And they, they call that side by side. So this capability is something that already exists and is in use by some people who are basically doing replication in reverse. So this is a tried and true way uh, that some people are, are sending data from SAP HR to Employee Central on a more permanent basis while there's a long story as to why that might be. But for those of uh, those of you that just basically just want to get your history online, this the InfoPorter does have a capability that you can use that um, will allow you to, when you're, when you're doing this for the first time, load in all of that history um, for a certain period of time. All right, number six, why would you use InfoPorter? Um, that is that it can do a good job of error tracking directly within SAP. So there is 
uh, every time that I run this process, it's going to actually record where did I have errors? And you can look that up. Uh, I can look at that up by employee. I can look it up for everybody. I can look it up to say, give me all the people that had job information records. And so it's a lot easier to attack whatever the problem is. But and again, I'm not having to go off to success factors, try to download from a job scheduler and see what those errors are. Instead, it's right there in SAP and I can run reports in and make whatever configuration or uh, ABAP changes that I need in order to make that process right. Uh, and all right, so now number seven. So the re uh, another thing that's really cool about this process is, as I mentioned before, this process is very fast. And what this enables us to do is, let's say that I've, that I, uh, and this happens quite a bit, you, you find out, oh, gee, we need to have a new field added, or we need to map this certain field a different way. Well, with the way that web services and the way that InfoPorter works, I can actually do this process um, whenever I need a mapping change. So I can just um, make that mapping change in the configuration and then I can rerun it. And, you know, four, four hours later, the full uh, extent of all of my data is reloaded. And that can be really useful during the project where I am needing to make iterative changes as we go and, and be able to see that. Instead of having to wait in between uh, to where I have to wait three weeks to see that that mapping change actually come to fruition from, from SAP to Employee Central. Instead, I can do it right away, make that configuration change. And because it's so fast, um, for sure, by overnight, you can run it and then pretty much see the data reflected in the system the next day. And that, that's really a game changer when it comes to your uh, to your uh, project because you can move much faster and uh, see the results and evaluate those results. Uh, but I do want to say, you know, I, I don't want to pretend like InfoPorter is not without its faults. And I want to just bullet point a few of these out. And, and the main reason is just to say, try to give a balanced view. So, you know, a few things that I've encountered along the way. Number one, um, it does not handle the uh, employee central leave of absence process because it's, of course, using the time, you know, the, the time management software within employee central. So there is not a process for that. So what I typically do is that's just going to be, an, you know, a follow on load that I need to do. Not a big deal, just something that you need to uh, consider uh, as part of your process. You would just load in files for your leaves of absence. Um, it also uh, it also will do a <laughs> it'll do a great job of of helping you figure out where maybe your SAP uh, data quality could be a bit lacking in history. So uh, it does not like it if you try to rehire some or hire somebody and then rehire somebody without a term record inside that SAP rec, uh, for that employee. So you can have some challenges with things like that. And so you're you, you know you may have to open up your paywall or your your payroll wall. And you know, insert records over time in order to get you know uh, uh, in data integrity in place, uh, uh, depending on how much history you're trying to load. So that's something to consider as well. Um, and then there are you know you can have problems if your central person and personnel number ranges overlap. And so there's um, there are some uh, remedies for that, but that that also is a minor thing that you have to work through. But again. Overall, when you compare that to how awesome it is to be able to run, load things quickly, do it through configuration, um, it's it's well well worth uh, you know these few headaches that you have. So um, again, you know, build out. Uh, you know, what I would highly recommend is uh, building out uh, info portal with with um, with uh, web services. And you know, if you're an organization where I'm saying, oh, I'm not so sure then uh, at least go in and do a proof of concept. Start out with InfoPorter, uh, do a very simple um, proof of concept, and you can see very quickly how easy it is to do this. And again, if you're, do, if you're a core hybrid customer, you don't even have to worry too much about adding in new, uh, new CPI or new add-ins or anything like that because everything that you need in order to use InfoPorter is already built in because you're doing the replication back. So the middleware is already there all of the CPI packages that you need, they're already there. So um, anyway, so that's just a, a quick summary of why InfoPorter is such a useful tool. Um, there are a couple of references here. Um, you, you, if you want to look at these two particular uh, InfoPorter um, based uh, IDPs, I would highly recommend that. There is uh, Employee Data Migration Strategy Considerations and then uh, Employee Central Data Migration Cutover optimization, uh, Optimization. So those are two uh, uh, implementation design principles that that you should look at and, and would be a good thing for you to consider 
as you're making that decision about how you're going to migrate the data. So again, I uh, I realize this is kind of a, a weird topic for some people. It's not gonna, if you're already on Employee Central, it's not gonna matter to you, but hopefully this will make its way to uh, you know one or two customers out there that are getting ready to implement. And also I, I'm, I'm talking to the partners out there. You know, if you have uh, dismissed uh, Infoport in the past, hey, now's a good time for you to look at it again with fresh eyes because it is really uh, a way to uh, accelerate and make your your life a lot easier so anyway that's that's all thank you very much for your time